Hey there and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and today we're going to show you how to add drama and style to your images as well as replace the sky. We got a great tutorial for you. Let's jump into Photoshop. So here's our sample image for today. It looks great. We're definitely missing some information here in the sky. There's pretty much nothing there. So the first thing we want to do is a sky replacement. So let's go up to edit and then down here to where it says sky replacement. Now there are a bunch of skies that come preloaded with Photoshop. You can see like these blue skies and things like that. None of these really fit what we want for this image. So what we're going to do is load our own. I'm going to go ahead and open up this folder that says my skies. I'm just placing my own skies in here. Let's click on, click on this plus icon and then you can go right to your download folder. You can actually download the sample image, the sky, as well as the PSD on flurn.com totally for free. That way you can follow along. So let's go ahead and load in this dark sky.jpg. I'm going to hit open and we're going to click on this dark sky and it's going to automatically put it in. Now the original image has a subject with an umbrella in it. So you can actually scale the sky adjust a little bit and you won't see that detail. That's looking really good. Now you can adjust your color temperature here to make it fit a little bit better. Let's go a little bit on the cool side. I think that looks good and we'll just work on our brightness. Now you can shift your edge back and forth to get a more realistic result and you can even fade it into the background. I think something that, like that looks great. Now let's go ahead and output this to new layers. That's super important. So we're going to hit OK and then my goal here is to make my new sky look kind of similar to the original sky. I don't want something drastically different because the sky is what lights the image, right? So if we pull in a totally different sky with different light and different color, it's not going to look realistic. So let's go ahead and take a look. I'm going to here just turn this layer off and on and we're looking pretty good overall. But what I'm going to do is grab a levels adjustment layer. So let's grab our adjustment layers, go up to levels. I'm going to make sure that clips so it only affects the sky. Just click on this icon right here. And then if I just turn this off and on, I can say, OK, you know what? Maybe I'm going to make my darks a little bit lighter and then I'm going to make my lights a little bit darker just so I can get a little bit closer to the original sky. There we go. I think that's looking pretty good. So we brought in that detail. Now, the other thing you might notice is sometimes you get this weird detail around the edges with your sky replacement. It doesn't look very natural. A great fix for this, all we have to do is go here in our layers. I'm going to scroll down and actually click. We have our sky and then we have the layer mask for the sky itself. If you click on the layer mask, I like to use the smudge tool. Just grab your smudge tool, bring your strength to like 40 or 50 percent and just kind of smudge it a little bit. What that does is it blurs that edge just a little bit, as you can see, and it'll give you a little bit more of a realistic result. So just kind of move it around a little bit and then push it towards the inside. There we go gives you a little bit more of a natural result. And especially when you zoom out a little bit, you're going to really tell a difference. It's just going to kind of blend together. You can do this for any type of sky replacement. This is just blurring the layer mask a little bit, and that's going to help everything just work together. Look more realistic for that edge. Fantastic. So this is looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and just close and open our sky replacement group. I think already we've got some nice drama. So the next thing we want to do is add some coloring to the image and add some light spots and some dark spots. Now we're going to do this exclusively with levels adjustment layers. We're going to create a few of them and use different settings to make them show up either in the lights or in the darks. So we're starting off by going up to layer down to new adjustment layer and over here to levels. There we go. Hit OK there and we're looking pretty good. Now my big secret with using levels is to go where it says RGB, click that and you'll get access to your red, green and blue channels independently. And this is going to allow you to affect your light as well as color at the same time. It gives more beautiful and interesting results than just working with light and dark. So let's go to our red channel here. There we go. Now I'm going to grab this slider here on the right. Let's go ahead and just pull this out here so we can kind of see what we're doing. Fantastic. This is going to go right over here. Now with this levels adjustment layer, you have again, we're in our red channel right now. You have a couple sliders. You have your darks, midtones and highlights. And then down here we have our black point and our white point. Let's take a look when I take my white point and start clicking and dragging that to the left. My image gets darker. The highlights get darker, but they also turn a little bit cyan. And that's because I'm in my red channel right now. And red is the opposite of cyan. 
So what I'm effectively doing is reducing the amount of reds in my highlights, which is adding more cyans. Let's go ahead and do that with other color channels as well. So let's go to our green channel and I'm gonna pull that down, get some nice interesting blues. And then we're gonna go to our blue channel and start to pull that down. And I'm gonna find like a nice mix that adds interesting color to my image. There we go. So that's actually looking pretty good. Now, here's the trick. At this point, this is visible everywhere, right? If I turn this off and on, I have a white layer mask on this. It's visible everywhere and it's visible for all my highlights and my shadows. But the cool thing now is that we can choose whether we want this to be visible in just the highlights or the shadows. So to do that, you can simply double click right here on the right hand side of your layer. That's gonna bring up your layer style dialog. You can also go to layer and then down here to layer style. Now here on the right hand side, we have a couple of little sliders. One says this layer, the other says the underlying layer. Now with the underlying layer, I can control the darks. And this is going to start to disappear in the dark areas or I can control the lights and it's gonna to start to disappear in the light areas. Now, here's the hint. You wanna hold Alt or Option and click on this slider and that's gonna separate it out into two. If you don't hold Alt or Option, you're just working with one slider and you're gonna get kind of like really grainy and not that useful results. So, bring it back to the right hand side, hold Alt or Option and click and now it separates those into two unique sliders and then you can click and move this around. This is gonna bring in some interesting feathering. And as you can see, now this effect is a lot more visible in the shadows of my image than my highlights. All right, let's just click this preview off and on. So there's our before and the after. You're seeing it's a lot more interesting. The skin tones look a lot better. Let's hit okay there. But we still introduced a lot of that really interesting dark color into our photograph. At any time I can go back in here and I can change some of these values. If I want a little bit more red, I can do that if I want you more green or less green, I can do that too. All right. Now the other thing I can do is actually click here on my layer mask. I'm gonna hit G for my gradient tool. Next, we're gonna go up here to the very top, use our linear, sorry, our radial gradient, the second one over. And then here for my colors, I'm gonna choose basics and we're gonna go to this foreground to transparent color. So what I can do, black is my color. I can click and drag out just like that. There we go. Let's just bring this all the way up to 100% opacity. Click and drag out and it's going to make it invisible in that area. There we go. So click and drag out to make this effect invisible. Now what we're going to do is bring our opacity back down to about 20% and we're just going to do a couple of these like little click and drag. There we go. And it's just going to kind of reduce this effect in different areas where I drag it out. So I'm working with my layer mask here and just kind of masking this out in certain areas where I want to hide this effect just to give us some more interest. All right. Now, if I, hold, if I hold Alt or Option and click on my layer mask, this is what the layer mask looks like. It's just a bunch of gradients. But now we can see it's kind of hiding it from different areas. So already this is looking so much more interesting. Let's add another levels adjustment layer and continue to compound these effects. So again, just go to Layer, down to New Adjustment Layer, and over here to Levels. Hit OK there. And then we're just going to do it again. But this time I want a slightly different color. So let's go to our red channel. We're going to bring that down. Let's go to our green channel, bring that way down, magenta, and then blue channel here. There we go. So now we're introducing some like warm reds and kind of yellows. That's gonna be really cool. Now on this layer mask, we're gonna slightly change it up a little bit. I wanna show you a few different tools and techniques and then you can just kind of choose your favorite. So let's hold Control or Command and hit I. That's going to invert the layer mask. It makes it completely invisible. So even if I click on this eyeball right here, you don't see anything. A black layer mask means your layer is totally invisible. So what we're going to do now is use the gradient tool and instead of painting black, we're going to paint white to make it visible in certain areas. So again, G for the gradient tool, or it's located right over here if you want to click on it. We're going to use our radial gradient right here, foreground to transparent, and then this time I just want to choose instead of black, click that, I want to choose my foreground color as white. Now I can click and drag out. There we go. Let's go ahead and bring up our opacity there. And wherever I drag out, it's going to introduce this interesting color. Okay. So I'm able to kind of like put this around my landscape. There we go. Even in the sky a little bit. Fantastic. And start to introduce this color around my image a little bit. There we go. Turn this off and on and we can see we have a little bit more of effect. And because it's like so random and just using the gradient tool, it tends to blend in pretty well with the image. So overall, I really like that. Now, don't forget, if 
At any time, you can lower your opacity if you want less or more of an effect. Or, of course, you can go back into your color channels and you can adjust these colors at any time. There we go. Something like that starting to look really, really nice. Now, we've done a couple different levels adjustment layers. Look at this and then after this coloring. It's much, much more interesting. Let's say I want like just a little bit more red where my subject is. We can do that with a levels adjustment layer as well. So let's go to layer, down to new adjustment layer, and over here to levels. Let's hit OK. Now, this time, I'm going to take my red channel, and instead of bringing my highlights darker, I'm going to adjust my midtones. We're just going to push those a little bit to the left there. There we go. That looks pretty good. Let's go to our green channel, and we'll push those a little bit to the left as well. OK. Now this, I might not want this to be visible everywhere, so let's try the same technique that we did before. Control or Command I to invert the layer mask. It's going to make it a black layer mask. Now back to our gradient tool, G for the gradient tool. Again, radial gradient, foreground and transparent, and white is my color. So let's go ahead and just drag this out, and I can add some really interesting highlights just to this area. Be sure not to only get your subject when you do this sort of thing, by the way, or else it's going to be like pretty like noticeable and obvious. It's like, okay, you wanted to just color your subject, right? So adding a little bit of information into our background makes that just a little bit more interesting. So again, there's our before and our after. Now I've got one more final step that's kind of interesting. What I like to do is I'm going to grab an adjustment layer. We can go to layer, down to new fill layer this time, and we're just going to choose a solid color. Let's hit OK. Now this solid color, we're just start with a color to show you that it doesn't matter what color you start with. I'm going to start with this green color. It's not what I want in the final, but we're starting here. Now I can change my blending mode. Right here above your layer stack, where it says normal, that's your blending mode. I'm going to change mine to multiply. OK, now you can see we have a dark green there. But if I just simply double click right here on my color, I can actually change this color at any time, but I have this multiply effect already applied. So maybe I want to add like a nice like yellowish color. Again, you can do something like super dark and moody if you want. There we go. Or you can just add like a tiny bit of color. Basically, it's just going to darken down your highlights a little bit, and then you can choose how much color you want in them as well. I'm going to choose something really nice and subtle here. There we go, knowing that I can change that at any time. So there's the before and the after. And again, if I want to, I can have this visible in just the highlights or even just the shadows. You can double click right here on your layer in the same place we did this before, underlying layer. If I want to disappear from the shadows, you hold Alt or Option here and separate those two sliders out. And then, boom, I can have that only visible in the highlights. So let's hit OK. Now we can see this is only visible in the highlights, adding an interesting look. There we go. And that completes our coloring. Let's go ahead and shift click all of those layers. Let's go ahead and take a look at our before and the after. Here's our before and the after. And then zoomed out so we can see the detail in the sky. There we go. Here's our before and the after. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget you can download all this for free on florin.com. Just follow the link down below. And as always, a free way to support the channel is leave a like. Send us a comment right down below letting us know what you'd like to learn. And if you want to get more free tutorials, hit that subscribe button. Thanks so much. I'll learn you later. Bye, everyone.